Dr. Ken here again with you. We're on three phase power. Uh, this is lesson 11, part two. We're working from 20.7 in the text. Now, electrical power is measured in watts. True power, of course, is measured in watts. A watt meter simultaneously measures the current and the voltage and provides a reading of the true power in a circuit regardless of the power factor. When we say regardless of the power factor, the watt meter is capable of actually measuring the power factor and it uses that in its calculation when it displays the true power. Three phase power supplies are either three wire or four wire, so we can have three wire delta, we can have three wire star, and of course four wire is always a four wire star where we bring the neutral out. And these loads can be balanced or unbalanced. So we use, need to use different techniques to measure three phase power. And they all involve one or more watt meters to do that. So here's our first one. It's called the one watt meter method using four wire supply. In this particular case, we have a single watt meter can be used to measure three phase power in a balanced circuit. The secret here, the trick is it's got to be a balanced circuit. So the total power is three times the watt meter reading. But while we're here looking at this watt meter, let's look at how the watt meter is connected. Let's look at the voltage first. So here's the voltage through here. And it's connected, of course, measuring voltage, it's connected in parallel across the supply. You can see there's a volt plus and a volts. Really, there is no plus or minus. It's just really volts in and volts out. Of course, it's AC. There's no plus or minus. On some watt meters, you might see M and L, M for in and L for out. But on some, you might actually see A plus for current, obviously, and A for out. So it's just representing A represents the current winding and V represents the volt winding. Of course, the amp winding is now connected in series with the circuit and measuring the current. As I said before, the arrangement of the two elements actually automatically measures the phase angle in here, and they use that to display watts. So in a three-phase system in a balanced circuit, it's simply the watt meter reading multiplied by three equals the power total. Reasonably straightforward and easy to remember. The next one is we're going to use a one watt meter three wire system. So in this particular application, you have a three wire supply. Now it, it could have been a three wire star load or a three wire delta load is what we've got here. So here's our, our delta load, very obviously a delta connected load. And we've got our voltage winding again connected in parallel. Ah, but parallel to where do you say? Well, what we've done is we've created what's called an artificial neutral point or a pseudo neutral. So this point here is a star connection of the three voltmeter windings. So basically we have created a little star system that looks like this. and we've created a pseudo neutral. So we have the, the RV across the element inside the watt meter and then 
we've got our RVs which are external. If I can write a little EXT for external and another RV here again externally located. So this one here is simply inside our watt meter. And we've created this little star and we're going to connect our voltmeter up to that star. So that's going to measure our phase voltage, which in this case is also our line voltage, so that's fine. The M and the L are going to measure the current in one phase, and because this is a delta load, the currents are all going to take care of themselves. And again, we can now just take the watt meter reading, multiply it by three. equals the power total. Nice and straightforward. The only tricky bit was producing this pseudo or artificial neutral for our watt meters voltage element to be able to connect to. So nothing like doing a little a bit of a uh, worked example to embed what we've learnt. So over here we have a single phase watt meter that's displaying 1600 watts. Uh, what's the dissipated by the balanced 400 volt load? It's star connected into a heating load. They want us to calculate the total power dissipated by the heater and the impedance in each of the phases. And as I always say to my students, let's draw the circuit. So here's our circuit. If you draw the circuit, it helps build a good mental model. And that's where students often stuff up. They forget the mental model they need to solve a particular problem. So this is the kind of connection we have and we've got to work out what the Z is in each of these phases. We don't know what that is but they have told us that the power in A phase is 1.6 kilowatts and we know that we have 400 volts line. So we know that this line voltage here is 400 volts. So to calculate the total power dissipated, the equation is the power equals three times the reading. So that's what we've done here. So we just take our 1.6, we multiply it by three, and we have power total of 4.8 kilowatts. Reasonably straightforward. The next bit's a little more complicated. And I've got to turn my pointer back on again, my pen. The voltage, sorry, the current phase will be the power divided by the power in the phase divided by the power in the, the volts in the phase. So we know that the power in one phase was 1600. We know that we have 230 volts. If you don't know that, all we did was take the... Um, 400 volts and we divided that by root 3 
to get our 230. So Ohm's law tells us there has to be 6.9 amps in each of the phases. And then finally, we know that Z is equal to the volts phase divided by the current phase. So our 230 divided by our 6.96, giving us 33.1 ohms for each of the Z impedances in our circuit. Our next is the 2 watt meter method. So again, the 2 watt meter method works well for a three wire system. The 2 watt meter method measures the current in two lines and voltages between those lines to the third. The total power is the algebraic sum of the 2 watt meters. In other words, you just got to add them together. So in this particular case, you can see, again, I'll turn my pen on. We're simply measuring the volts line. So in this case, we're measuring volts line. Here, we're measuring volts line. And we're measuring the current in C phase. And we're measuring the current in A phase. We don't have to worry about the current in B phase because in a star system, they all balance out. And we simply power total is equal to watt meter number one plus watt meter number two. So very helpful. So this measures two lines of voltage to the third line and the power is simply the algebraic sum or the addition of both the watt meters. Now this uh, two watt meter method also allows us to calculate the power factor. And uh, so we can use the formula you can see there to calculate the tan of the angle and some power factor meters will actually come with a, um, a graph and you can do it from the graph. So again, I'll just get my pointer on. So let's look at the formula first. So again, only works for a balanced load because we can only get overall power factor for a balanced load we can't do it for an unbalanced load and it's just W2 minus W1 divided by W2 plus W1 multiply all of that by the square root of 3 and that gives you the tan of the angle the tan and then once you have the tan if you want to turn it back into a power factor you just go tan to the minus 1, turns it back into degrees, and then you take the cos of that angle. Also, from the graph, you can draw a horizontal line from the value of W1 divided by W2 and plot it on the curve. So in this particular case, we've got W1 divided by W2 is a positive. 0.5 so that's where that is on the curve so on that axis there's our 0 0.5 and then we simply plot across till we hit a thing called the S curve project down and you can see 0.9 is about there so we've got to be in the region of about 8.7 is where we're reading our little graph. So there you have um, the two watt meter method used to determine the power factor. Two ways to do it. You can either take the ratio of W1 divided by W2 and use the graph or you can find the tan of the angle by taking W2 
minus W1, divide that by W2 plus W1. Don't forget to multiply by the square root of 3, because it's 3 phase, and it gives you the tan of the angle. So the process would be, you'll have to go tan to the minus 1 equals the angle, and then to get the power factor, you'd have to go the cos of the angle will equal the power factor. A couple of extra steps, but not too hard to do. So with the two watt meter method, there are actually two ways we can end up finding out what the power factor is. So again, a little worked example, again, uh, from the text. So in this particular case, we've got watt meter one reading two kilowatts, watt meter two reading four kilowatts, and we're gonna calculate the power taken by the motor and the power factor of the motor. So summarizing the two values that we have, two kilowatts and four kilowatts. So power calculation's nice and easy. We know that power equals W1 plus W2. So we're simply going to add the two together. And we know from that that we have a total power of six kilowatts true power. Calculating now the power factor, we're going to use the equation. So equation one, we know the tan of the angle is equal to W2 minus W1 divided by W2 plus W1, and don't forget to multiply by root three. So again, doing the calculation, we basically get root three times two on six, giving us the tan of the angle at 0.85, we take 10 to the minus one, and we end up with an answer of there is 30 degrees, is the angle. But of course, that's the angle, not the power factor. And we know we need the cos of 30 degrees, so we put the, that into our calculator, and it tells us that the cos is 0.866. If we go back to our previous page and look at the graph, we could, uh, work out the ratio. The ratio will be 0.5 and again the power factor off the graph would be 0.87. So help, I hope that's helped you embed our two watt meter method for both measuring power and providing us with the actual power factor. Uh, you can use three watt meters, four wire, so this is the connections for three watt meters and a three phase four wire system. This can be used on balanced or unbalanced loads. Um, that's one of the big advantages of this particular system. It doesn't matter whether it's balanced or it's unbalanced, it will work. And of course, it doesn't matter whether it's a star connected load or a delta connected load. So quite often, this is the method we'll use, and we're simply measuring the power in A phase, B phase, and C phase. So again, power total is just equal to the power in A plus the power in B. plus the power in C. Nice and straightforward. Um, quite often when we were doing this commercially, um, we measure the current in a phase using a clip-on ammeter arrangement, and we measure the voltage, and what we do is we only have one watt meter, and we measure the voltage 
across a phase and we measure the current and we take one watt meter reading and then we move the current clip on ammeter down to the next phase we move the voltage down to the next phase and we measure the next one then again we move the clip on ammeter down to the next phase we move the voltage down to the next phase and we measure the watts and we just then add our three readings together so even though we say this is the three watt meters method really what we do in practice is we use one watt meter and we measure three times this is the uh, three watt meter method three wire this one you actually do need three separate watt meters for uh, the load can be balanced or unbalanced and a star connected or de in delta an artificial neutral point is established with the watt meter so instead of using resistors to create our artificial neutral or our pseudo neutral we're actually using the meter elements themselves so the voltmeter element of each of the voltmeters is actually creating a star point so each of those creates a star point so quite literally this is what we're doing so voltmeter one voltmeter two this is inside the watt meters and voltmeter three inside the voltmeters and we've just created a star point therefore each of these elements will measure the volts phase yep they will measure the volts phase because we've created a pseudo neutral point and it's a nice neat little trick so it is the same potential as that neutral there even though it's not been brought out and the reason it's the same potential is because each of these elements is the same impedance if they were different impedances it wouldn't work but since those three are all the same impedance we can create a pseudo neutral or star point and the voltmeters will actually inside the wattmeters will measure the phase voltage not the line voltage therefore again our formula here is power total simply is w1 plus w2 terrible two plus W3 so again the trick here is the pseudo neutral allowing us to use three watt meters but as I said before in this particular case you physically have to have three watt meters to be able to achieve this type of system so let's sum up our entire lesson parts one and parts two the power in a three-phase balanced load can be measured with a single watt meter the total power is just simply three times the watt meter reading that was the first one we looked at next total power using two watt meter method is the algebraic sum of the watt meter readings so you just add them together either watt meeting meeting could actually show a negative reading so you've got to be ready for that so you might be adding a negative which will lend you up with a smaller number um, power factor for a balanced load can be derived from the two watt meter method and if you remember we can get we can work out the tan of the angle by taking watt meter 2 minus watt meter 1 divided by watt meter 2 plus watt meter 1 multiplying all of that by root 3 gives us the tan of the angle 
then we of course got to turn that back into an angle and then convert it to the cos the angle to get the power factor. The total power using the 3 watt meter method is the algebraic sum of the 3 watt meters so we just add the 3 watt meters together and that ends our video on reading power using watt meters part 2 of lesson 11. As always I found some nice video clips on YouTube that could be helpful. Um, there's one on three phase calculations goes for about three minutes and but I suggest you start at uh, minute 1.45 the, pre the preceding stuff is not that helpful. Um, there's a kilowatt to amps in three phase very helpful only runs for one and a half minutes and an example on the two watt meter method and uh, that just runs for two minutes. So I hope you've enjoyed lesson three.